Hi guys, welcome back to Hollywood Mechanic. I'm gonna show you how to do a accumulator for the suspension, all four, and uh, the bleed without the McLaren tools. Be very, very careful. This is, um, it can have very high pressures. Um, you don't wanna mess up the pump or the system. Um, it can cause severe damage to the system. Also, uh, the fluid is very caustic, so you may uh, seriously damage paint permanently or brake systems or right around the brakes so just be very very careful cover everything in plastic be very careful um, now this is something I just really don't recommend you do it yourself but if you want to do it or your shop and you have a great understanding of hydraulic systems I'm going to show you how to do that here as a common um, symptom of this fault is obviously the suspension fault um, issue on uh, the, the dash, but as well, you'll hear the pump. And if you're reading codes, you may have uh, pump overrun, fluid overheated, boom, boom, boom. If you get fluid overheated, you've got to replace this fluid. Now, the cylinders are, they go bad every three or four years. Um, they're not that expensive. It's like four or 500 bucks a piece. Um, you're, but you're also going to want to do the power steering filter at the same time. And this is a low pressure system right here on the front of the car. So obviously, you don't have to take the whole front bumper off. We're adding a bumper, I mean, a, a Vorsteiner front splitter. So that's why it's off. But you do need to take the front trunk out. And this is the pump that you hear whining. You want to keep it closed up and you want to keep that drain connected. If it comes off, water will start to flow in here and cause problems. Some of the other early cars have recalls. This is the fluid, again, CHF11S or 202. And this hose assembly has the filter there. Anyway, it comes with all the hoses and all the clamps except for that one. Uh, so, you know, my shop, we stock all the clamps in different sizes. I use a 19.2 Oedeker, and that seems to be great for that. Yes, they use 19.8, but they both will work. Okay, so you're going to want to change that. Be careful, fluid, again, is going to come out of that reservoir. So, you know, just be ready to catch it with something. Uh, you don't want it going on wires, on rubber things, on boots. Uh, then you're going to replace that and fill it up with fresh fluid you know there's gonna it'll pretty much bleed this section on its own okay now to the suspension so um i didn't have any pressure built up on this one because all of mine were bad so um there's no need to worry about high pressure however this could be a high pressure system so when you're taking these accumulators off you might have discharge so what i would recommend you do is Turn the car off, let it sit overnight, start working on it the following morning. If you have a scan tool like the Autel, you can see pressures, some pressure values. These are the accumulators that I was telling you about. So for the fronts, obviously you have to remove the um, front wheel well liners. And for the back, you have to remove the wheel well liners as well. And then just loosen this clamp right here and these three eight millimeters. And then you can wiggle this out of the way and get plenty of room for your rent. Okay, now the real serious spot. You're gonna need to make a system to bleed it. First thing you're gonna need to know is that there are these connectors called QC4s. They're made by a company called Swage Lock. Um, Swage Lock, they have a headquarters in Cameron Ridge Lock, S-W-A-G-E-L-O-K. And uh, the QC4 to three quarter NPT is what I'm gonna, what I chose to use. You'll need two of those, female, uh, it's a, so as you can see in this diagram here, this is the way that what you're going to build your machine to hook this up. It's going to be a QC4 that connects to a 90 degree elbow, female to female in three quarter NPT. That way, you know, and you're going to need some uh, Teflon that's rated for a gas system. You're going to wrap that QC4 into three quarter NPT connector in the Teflon, put it into the 90 degree elbow. On the other side of that, you're going to need a male three quarter MPT to three sixteenth barb. Um, and then you're gonna connect that to a three sixteenth inner diameter, 120 PSI plastic tubing. They sell this, all this stuff at Home Depot. You may have to order some of it online. It may not be in stock. Uh, you're gonna use an 8.7 Oedeker uh, vibration resistant clamp to seal that down. And then run a length of tube, measure that out between the two um, connections in the rear of the of the uh, McLaren 720s. It's about three and a half feet between them. Uh, then it'll go to another 
uh, three sixteenths inner or barb to three quarter NPT male. Then you'll have a female times three three quarter NPT T. Then a uh, one of that T will be the QC four, and then the other unused T will be a three quarter uh, male to male two inch nipple. Then that will go to another um, three way female three quarter NPT T, and then you'll put a ball valve male to female three quarter mpt going into the other two unused uh, spots on that t and then that way you can close off um, when you're drawing a vacuum uh, you can close off the fluid inline and then you can close off the vacuum side when you're putting the pressure the fluid in and then from that you'll need a three quarter to half inch barb to go to your central pneumatic 20 pound pressurized abrasive blaster. You can get this at um, Harbor Freight. You do need to clean it out. It will have debris in it, so you need to make sure you clean that out before you use it. Uh, you're not gonna set it up the normal way. You don't need the governing hose. You just run a hose straight out the bottom and then the airline straight in the top. And then on the other side of that T, you're gonna go ahead and put a male to uh, 3 16th barb and go across with another 316 line, again to 8.7 millimeter Oedeker clamps, to another uh, 3 quarter NPT to 316 bar, going into a degassing chamber or a resin chamber. Uh, and then from that, you will need to connect an AC vacuum machine. So it's very simple. Go ahead and with your fill tank, the media blaster full of clean, you know, clean down, full of clean, CHS 11S or 202, uh, I would put three or four quarts of it in there. Go ahead and um, hook up your air connector and put in, let's say, um, two bar of pressure. So, so you gotta find a way to purge the fluid up to the up to that ball valve and before I did the drain on the whole system I went ahead and pressurized the tank or opened the valve to the degassing chamber and then opened the valve to the filling tank so it would push the fluid from the filling tank into the back around to the degassing chamber once you see no air coming out of there then go ahead and close the valve to the filling tank and um, you know that the air is purged you know uh, so you got a full line full of fluid we're going to go ahead and connect our device the two QC4s with the valves from the QC4s to your uh, resin trap and to your uh, vacuum or to your fill system closed. This just clicks on to the back. To get access to the port, you'll have these little black covers um, that protect them right here. These covers to get that off. You just lift up on the red here and while pulling down on this, and then you'll have the nipple exposed, okay? Let's go ahead and uh, go up to these two access ports. You can access them from the rear wheel wells down in the back. You will plug in the QC4 connectors to that, and uh, that will, at that point, um, have you tied into the system. And what you'll do, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and open the valve to the degassing chamber or the resin trap and that will allow the pressure from the car to go into the um, catch container that you have there uh, and that will relieve the pressure from the rear now in order to get the pressure from the front um, also released and into that catch can you're going to need to now go to the front of the car and uh, just behind the battery um, is the valve block. You'll notice these are the lines from the back right here and these are the lines from the front. They go up to the front left and right sides. Okay so to connect them right there is a solenoid and that would just make sense that they connect those two together. So the way that you do that is you're going to depin the plug to it. If you don't have the plug, the plug is very common to prong like uh, fucking on every uh, evap purge solenoid ever, you probably have one of these plugs laying around. If you don't, don't worry. Just um, cut the plug off of an oxygen sensor and de-pin it or something that you do have laying around uh, and then 
um, use those pins to insert into this device. Now the way that you get those pins out, it has this little pink lock in it. There it slides in there. So you're just gonna slide that out and then where those two little holes are, you're gonna use a de-pinning tool. It's just two prongs. You stick those two prongs in the two slots on either side and then push the wire up through the back a little bit and then pull it as applying pressure with this and it'll just slide right out. And then you can um, slip in your new oxygen sensor wires or whatever. And when you're done, there's been no damage done. You just put them right back. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and connect this and then you can just connect it to a 12 volt battery. You'll hear it click. You can hear it click there. Okay, so at each shock, clean off around the accumulator. Uh, we're gonna be um, loosening those. You want debris falling into them. So clean it extremely well, and then you're going to, uh, one at a time, loosen it and spin it enough so the airflow can go into it, okay? The reason for this is you wanna get all the fluid out of all the lines. So when you do it to the front ones, again, jump that solenoid, loosen one from the front, and now here's where you're going to suck the fluid out. So if you loosen it enough so where airflow can go through there or take it off, then you'll go to your de to your vacuum pump, connect it to your degassing chamber or your resin trap and start drawing a vacuum and that will suck the fluid out of the system to that line. Now if you're using a degassing chamber, fluid will try to go over into the vacuum pump. Um, you can also raise your pump well above the degassing chamber and fluid pretty much won't go up there, but whatever, it's a cheap pump if you get fluid in it, whatever. Then after you've done that and got all the fluid that will come out of that line, then put the new accumulator on it and move to the next one. Uh, I would recommend doing the two front ones first and then go do the two rear ones. Again, one at a time, that way you're only drawing fluid from that section. As you can see, fluid is gonna keep pouring out of there. And it's important that you get all the fluid out because if you don't get all the fluid out, the vacuum fill will not work properly. Okay, and that is coming from right here. That's where... You can hear the air coming out of here. And then after they all have been done and you have no more fluid coming out of the car, then, you know, tighten them all down. Um, I use a three quarter or 19 with a swivel end. You're gonna need the swivel end because this front one here is up under there. So you're gonna have to get in there, okay? Then to hold the shock as you're applying the torque, um, you can use something like a pipe wrench. Just be very careful. Choose a spot that's smooth on the body and then um, tighten it down just a little bit, not too tight. You're just keeping it from rotating as you apply the torque. And now you will um, go ahead and draw a vacuum on the system. You wanna get all the air out. So again, uh, have the system, the valve that goes to your degassing chamber or your resin trap open, open the valve and then to your vacuum pump and run it. And you're gonna to wanna to watch that pressure go down as low as it can go until it stops going down. Go ahead and hold it there for like another couple of minutes. Close the valve to the vacuum pump and turn it off and watch to see if that vacuum goes down. Now vacuum doesn't, not going down will indicate you have no large leaks. If you don't have vacuum going down, it does not mean that you don't have any leaks. A vacuum is a very small amount of pressure that you can get compared to the, what the pump will generate. It's gonna generate you know, 10, 11 bar or more of pressure uh, when, it's, when the car is running. So you may still have leaks. So just be aware of that uh, and check the system before you put all the fender liners back in. But you're just drawing a vacuum right now to get the air out of it. And then um, once you see that you've got no uh, leaks large enough to lose the vacuum, then what you're going to do is, um, now that you have a full vacuum on the front and rear system, all the fluid out of it, and your line purged, you'll go ahead and close off the valve to the degassing chamber or the um, resin trap, and you'll open the valve at that point to the fill tank, and that will allow fluid to rush into the system, filling it up, and then again, you're going to want to have air pressure hooked up to that tank as well. And you wanna make sure that 
you put in, um, I believe five bar is enough. I went ahead and put seven bar of pressure, okay? And this will get uh, the full system up to um, comfortably within range of the car to operate. At this point, you can um, close off the pressure supply from, or the close the valve that goes to your uh, car and then disconnect the QC force and now and put the caps back on. Now you have a completely filled system, um, no air, clean fluid. Like I said before, make sure you change the uh, filter, uh, suck the, um, drain all the fluid out of the reservoir, put fresh fluid in there. Now you got a pretty full fresh system and, um, and then go ahead and uh, put the wires back into the solenoid plug. Um, here's a picture of what it looks like from the factory, from the plug, and then uh, yeah, and then reconnect the battery, uh, put the car on the ground, and start the car, and all the faults should have gone away. You may need to clear codes, but all that should go away, and you'll be good to go.